Louis Patron back with the Key West Lou Legal Hour. I screwed up here this morning. I told you a couple of segments back that when I returned, I was going to talk about birth control, the Catholic Church, Obamacare, Boston College, students, etc. And I skipped right over it. So let me open this segment with this story because it's like what goes around comes around. We know that Obamacare provides for free contraceptives for women because birth control is an issue. The church is anti-birth control. Uh, so they, a furor erupted, and it was decided that if there was a religious institution, and they didn't, morally, they didn't feel it was right to provide free contraception. They did not have to. There was another way to take care of the women working there. Uh, and it would be done that way, and so the Catholic Church was happy as far as that went. They're still unhappy that any form of birth control is being provided to any woman, and especially free of charge. And, but not everyone's happy. Not everyone's happy, because birth control was an issue of the 50s and 60s. It should be gone today, just like a lot of issues should be gone, a lot of women's issues. Now comes Boston College a great Catholic institution. I'm not saying this facetiously. Jesuits, Jesuits teach. That's a Jesuit school. The new Pope, Pope Francis, is a Jesuit. They're by the book. I've been telling you and I've been writing this. They're very doctrinaire. They're hard ass. This is what the book, the good book, the Bible says. They don't interpret. That's the word of God. All right. Be that as it may. No contraceptives. Boston College is not providing its employees with contraceptives or birth control information or anything like that. They have to get it outside, but the government has worked out a system for that. Well, we have many intelligent students. It's not easy to get into Boston College. It's a, it's a tough Catholic institution, and it takes the cream of the crop. The students, many of them, are not happy with this. They feel that contraceptive information, birth control information, birth control products, condoms, should be available easily and freely on the campus. Condoms and birth control information. So, the students are now giving out condoms free out of their, their dormitory rooms, and they're also providing birth control information to any other student who wishes it. Condoms, birth control information free helpful. Well, <laughs> the Boston College says, hey, you can't do this. This is against what we believe in. Now, you got a real problem that's developing here. It just broke yesterday. It's going to hit the fans next week. I can see it coming. They told the kids, stop. But they didn't say it firmly. And they said, we're happy to sit down and discuss this with you. You've got the right of the, of the Jesuits, you've got the right of Boston College to say, we do not want to participate in that part of Obamacare that provides free contraception and free birth control advice. On the other hand, Lewis thinking, a student or students have the right to say, I don't care what you think. I'm merely a student here. I'm, I, you know, I'm paying to go to school here. You're providing me with an education, but I disagree. And I think it's right to have this information available and to make condoms available. And it's my right of expression, my right of free speech. We have two major issues coming into conflict. The kids' right to say what they want to say and do what they want to do. And the school's right to say, my employees can't have birth control. This has nothing to do with the employees. This has to do with the students now. Interesting issue, interesting war developing. It's a confrontation. I think this confrontation, not as big as is gay marriage constitutional, but it's sort of going that way. It's a major, major issue. The outcome is going to be interesting. All right, now we're going to go to, ho, ho, ho. A fellow by the name of David Ranta. David Ranta spent 23 years in jail. He was convicted of murder. He, he was 58 years old last week. This is sad. I choke up when I talk about it. He was 58 years old last week, and he was let go. He was set free because it was determined he was not guilty. He should never have been convicted, and he was freed from jail, I think on Wednesday. Freed from jail. Apology of the court. You should never have been convicted. 
It's a miscarriage of justice. The reporters met him at the door when he left the jail. He was, all, he was emotionally excited, they said. His freedom meant so much to him. That was Wednesday. David Ratna died the next day, Thursday, of a heart attack, probably brought on by the emotion of having been freed. This man took a double hit in his life. He lost 23 years for a murder he did not commit. And then when he finally gets out and he can enjoy life, whatever he's got left of it, he's so excited and pleased he dies of a heart attack. Sad story. The state of Maryland, we're staying now with people convicted of murder. I want to play with that a little bit. The state of murder, uh, state of murder, the state of Maryland uh, this past week signed into law. They have a new law. They abolished the death penalty in Maryland. Abolished. Uh, it was found back in 1976 by the United States Supreme Court to be constitutional to have a, a death sentence, okay? But we've seen since then so many cases come up where people have spent 20 and 30 years in jail, and now we have this DNA stuff where they can find out if you really committed the crime by checking whatever your DNA is against the DNA on the body of the victim. They can even exhume a body that's been underground for 20 years and find whose DNA is in there. And people, it's been found, how many people, so many people have been wrongly jailed, convicted for murders they never committed, all right? That's the reason I'm against the death penalty, and I always have been, not because of the DNA factor, but because I know from the system. I've tried a murder case. I've tried a lot of cases. Uh, I was not a criminal lawyer. I ended up being a big-time civil lawyer, but at the beginning, I was a criminal lawyer, and the first criminal case I tried was a murder trial five and a half weeks, so I understand, okay? And I saw the system wasn't perfect. Judges made mistakes. Juries made mistakes. Innocent people were going to jail. Not a huge percentage, but if one innocent person goes to jail, it's one too many. And if one innocent person is put to death for a murder, that's obviously one too many. So the states now have been going against the death penalty, especially based on the DNA information that's come forth. And so Maryland now stands against the death penalty. You can't get put to death in the state of Maryland. Which brings me to another murder case. Remember Amanda Knox. Amanda Knox is the American girl who was in Italy studying, and she had a boyfriend, and she had a female roommate, and somehow the re female roommate got killed. She and two, her boyfriend and another guy were charged with the crime. One of them pled guilty and is doing about 10 years. Amanda and her boyfriend fought the case. They said, we didn't do it. I didn't do it. They were convicted. The trial took months. Italy has the, the worst judicial system. Trials take forever, appeals forever, appeals are a whole new trial. Anyhow, she's convicted. She's given 25 years, he, 26 years. He's given 25 years. She goes on appeal in Italy, Amanda Fox. This all happened in 2007. She was in jail from 2007 to 2012, by the way. And on appeal, after this lengthy appellate procedure, the appellate court says, Amanda, you and your boyfriend did not commit the crime, okay? And so she's free, and she gets her ass back to the United States as fast as she can with her parents, and she lives now, I think, in Washington. She went right home, and I can't blame her. Get me out of this country. Well, Italy has strange laws. In this country, if you're convicted of a crime, and you take an appeal, and you win on appeal, they can't try you again. That would be double jeopardy. You can only put a person on trial one time for a crime. If they are convicted but beat it on appeal, no more. That's it. It's called double jeopardy. They don't have double jeopardy in Italy, so the prosecution appealed the appeal to the highest court of Italy, who said, no, we don't think the appellate court was right. We think there should be a whole new trial. So they want Amanda Fox Knox to come back for a whole new trial on this murder charge. Good luck. She's not leaving this country, she said, and I don't blame her. Can the Italians force her back? Perhaps she can be tried in absentia, and if she's found guilty, they could try to extradite her. I can't believe any court or judge in this country is going to send that girl back after this whole mockery of justice that we see happening in Italy with her case, with Berlusconi's cases, and with everyone else's cases. 
And it's sad they don't have the, the theory of double jeopardy in Italy. Okay, we're going to break again. When I return, I'll have more to talk about. Please stay with me. We have one more segment. Thank you.